Hey everybody, welcome to How-To Videos with Dr. Amy Gates. This is part two of our two-part presentation about probability, rates, and expected value. We just finished doing example three, and we're gonna move on to doing example four. In this example, we're talking about odds and expected value. And a lot of you may be new to the concept of odds. So I wanted to go through this example in a little bit more detail, and we've got some good pictures here as well. Here's the problem. Suppose you are given 20 to three odds that you roll the value of a seven with two fair six-sided die. What does this mean? This means that you will win $20 if you succeed in rolling a seven with your two die, just like it kind of shows right here. One way to roll a seven is to get a five and a two. There are other ways as well. But if you succeed in rolling your die and getting a seven between your two dice, you're gonna win $20. However, if you lose and you do not roll a seven, you have to pay $3. That's what 20 to three odds means. So the next part of answering this question is understanding how to calculate the expected value. Part A says, what is the expected value of this game for you? So for me, I have 20 to three odds. I want to roll a seven, because if I roll a seven in any way, I get $20. If I don't roll a seven, I have to lose $3. So my expected value is calculated by figuring out how many ways there are for me to win and multiplying that by $20, how many ways there are for me to lose and multiplying that by the $3 and then subtracting away the losses from the wins to get the expected value. So let's think about that. How many ways are there for me to roll a seven? Well, this table shows the sums of all possible rolls. If I roll a one on the first die and a one on the second die, the sum is a two, so that is not a seven. I will lose. If I roll a two on one of the dies and still a one on the other die, the sum is a three. I'm gonna lose that as well. Similarly, if I roll a three on one of the dies and I roll a two on the other die, I get the sum of five. That's also not gonna work. But you can see how this table works, and that's important. This is your roll on one of the dies. This is your roll on the other die. And it shows all 36 possibilities. And that's important because you can either roll two ones, or you can roll a one and a two, or you can roll a one and a three, and so on. So there are actually one, two, three, four, five, six different ways for me to roll two die that will give me a sum of seven, and they're all circled here. So out of all the 36 possible ways that the, these two die can fall, six of them give me a win. That means that six out of 36 times, I'm gonna win $20. Six out of 36 times, I'm gonna win $20. That also means that the other 30 times out of 36, I'm gonna lose $3. That's why there's a minus sign here. So my expected value is the probability of winning, that's six out of 36, times how much I make if I win, that's $20, minus the probability of losing, that's 30 out of 36, times how much I have to pay if I lose. When I multiply my probability of winning, which you can just do this as a decimal, times how much I'm gonna win, I get 3.33. When I multiply my probability of losing times how much I'm gonna lose, I get 2.5. And when I do this subtraction, I get 0 .83. 83 cents. So basically, my expected value here is a positive number, and it's 0.83. Now, do I expect to win the first time I play this game? No, certainly not. My, my odds of winning are only six out of 36. So 30 out of 36 times, I'm gonna lose. 
Don't let the expected value confuse you. Even though the expected value is positive, each time you play this game, each time you roll the die, you only have six out of 36 chances of winning. Those are not good odds. However, if you play this game a hundred times, how much could you win? You would multiply a hundred by your expected value, and that gives you $83. So when you have a positive expected value, you're actually better off playing as many times as you can so that averaged over 100 games, you expect to win that $83. Because if you just play once, even though your expected value is positive, your probability of winning is not. So that's a lot to think about, but that's how you calculate an odds problem. All right, let's look at the example number five now. In this last example, we're going to look at rates and policies. Car insurance companies need to have enough money to pay out for accidents and also to make a rather large profit, apparently. So they need to know the accident rates. They need to have as much information as humanly possible about accident rates and costs and ages and everything so that they can collect enough money to make sure that they have enough money to pay out for any accidents that come up, come up and they have enough money to pay for their business, basically. So the question here is, using this table of lots of information, what is the accident rate per 100,000 people during their 20th year? The only thing that makes a problem like this challenging is what this question's actually asking you and how to find it in the table. Once you see how to find it, it becomes very straightforward. What is the accident rate per 100,000 people during their 20th year? All right, well, this table definitely gives us differences by age. So these are for people who are 16 through 19. This is for people who are 20 through 24 people who are 25 through 32, and so on. This column is the probability of getting into a car accident during this age interval. So if you're in this age group, it's a 0.0345. If you're in this age group, it's 0.0236, and so on. So what this is asking is, what's the rate for 100,000 people during their 20th year? Well, let's just see what the rate is first. During someone's 20th year, that would be inside this age range. These are people who are starting out at 20 and going all the way through 24. So during your 20th year, you're in this particular range. What's the rate of an accident in this range? It's 0.0236. So if I grab any one person and say, this person's 20 years old, what's the probability of a car accident? It's 0.0236 or about 2.36%. To find out the rate for 100,000 people, I simply multiply by that rate. That tells me that 2,360 people are likely to get into an accident per 100,000 people who are in their 20th year. So that's how you answer a question like this. And one of the things you might have noticed about this particular example sets is a lot of numbers are here that we're not using. Like we only use this particular value. We didn't bother with this number, or these numbers, or anything else. And that's part of the key here is oftentimes you'll be given a table of data. And part of answering the question is understanding what part of that data, what part of that table is relevant. All right, well, this ends our overview, our two-part presentation about probability rates and expected value. I hope this presentation was helpful. Thanks for tuning in.